Hello everybody, Hazardous Wastelander here, and today I'm going to be giving like a bit of a tour of all my animals. Kind of a bit of a animal room showcase, I would say. I mean, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. So, first up right here, you know, I know I said I was going to be posting regularly. I'm sorry, but, you know, first up, here we have a 20-gallon, just a normal 20-gallon tank. And in it, there are three sword tails, one male, two females, two uh, Harlequin Rasporus. Those are the two little fishies here. And uh, one... Sidontist catfish and one albino rainbow shark and uh, so far they've been living pretty well in here although <coughs> the catfish keeps eating the plant right right in there Oop, right in there yeah he keeps eating the plant which kind of was annoying at first but now that I now that I've gotten used to it just not being there it's okay um, I think I might try and use some of the, uh, this stuff, Valisneria that I have to see if he won't eat that or not, <laughs> which I have quite a bit of, but all right, so then moving on, we have up in here, in my big giant 40 gallon long, which currently has nothing in it but, uh, my two moss cultures, where I'm kind of just growing moss. It's hard to see, but up oh, there. There you go. All that moss in there. And then this one, there's moss on stuff like a rock over there, you know? And then here we kind of move on to a bit of a more exciting part. So in there I have moss, some dirt, and a lot of dead leaves, although there were a lot more. Now there's not. Um, all the It's kind of a bit of a biological experiment that I just did. I took a bunch of outside dirt, a bunch of outside organisms like isopods, springtails, worms, a couple millipedes, I think, some centipedes, um, and some moss. And I just kind of threw it in here, and I waited to see what would happen. And so far, most of the dead leaves are gone, except for those couple ones on top. I'm going to be adding more at some point because, you know, got to keep adding more. It's, it's fall, always. And I might add some more moss in. But so far, yeah, this moss here is doing really good. It's growing, like, really tall. And it's spreading around. So hopefully that takes over and the life continues to grow. Now... Down below, next to the 20 gallon, is basically that same sort of experiment, but on a much larger scale. Um, there used to be like an actual like little oak tree, I think it was, but I think it's dead now. It it looks pretty dead, you know, no leaves. Well, that might just be because it's winter, but all the leaves fell off, and I think it's dead. So that's pretty great, but then uh, there's a bunch of moss, um, I believe, oops, sorry, I believe the substrate is EcoEarth, a little bit of actual, like, dirt from outside, and, um, co no, yeah, I heard it said coconut, and some charcoal, and leaf litter, obviously, and that's all kind of mixed in, and I don't think that there are any worms, but there might be, um, there's a couple snicks, uh, snicks, 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 very good word, sticks, there's a couple sticks somewhere around in here, and, um, yeah, like, there's that, there's some rotting wood chunks that I just grabbed out of the forest and threw in, um, there's a bunch of moss that I went out and collected, and there's, like, that one, uh, down in there, there's, like, really... Cool moss. It's, it's, ah, it's really, like, star-shaped and just beautiful. And then there's some dead sphagnum moss around in there. There's, uh, sweet gums. And some fern leaves that are decomposing now. Because they weren't actually living ferns, they were just the leaves. So, sadly, they're decomposing. Maybe, maybe I'll get some ferns to grow. But in here, there's a big, big colony of isopods. Um, you might be able to see one or two. There's a couple millipedes. Or not millipedes, centipedes. 
Uh, and there's a random darkling beetle. Oh, I just saw movement down in, down in here. Somewhere. Right in there. I swear, there's, there's living creatures in here. Um, but yeah. So this is just on my first one rack. So, we're going to cut over to the other two shelves. And over here we have, um, my baby sword tail tank. Again, you know, I have five baby sword tails. And they're actually, they're actually growing up really big now. They're starting to get their color. Um, but yeah, no, they used to be, like, barely visible. Like, the tiny little guppy that I have, which is up in that one there. Wait, oh, stop focusing. That there, um... There's a tiny little baby guppy, but in here I have a big fake plant thing that used to be in the gecko's enclosure up there, but is now in the aquarium. Um, I have some, I believe, Italian Val Snaria, or something. It's it's not jungle Val, but it's a it's a species of Val Snaria, which is actually putting out new growth, new leaves, and then it's new growth. Look at that, it's so cute and baby and pretty. And then in the back there, it's doing the exact same thing. Like, look, there's there's that one, that one's the big one. That one also got planted there. But then it's 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 made this one, this tiny little one, and it's, ah. Oh. And there's a big colony of snails in here. Like, most of my aquariums have ginormous colonies of lots and lots of snails, which I like because the snails make it kind of a, you know, Rich environment, they clean the algae off the glass a little bit more, which you may notice the glass looks kind of dirty, but it's not an unhealthy dirty. It's it's just actually helpful bacteria and it's algae that the snails are eating. So, you know, it, it goes to a good cause. It's not unhealthy for them. And moving up we have as you all saw in the last video my gecko rainy her enclosure which i keep at a constant 91.6 around that temperature on this basking area which the rock absorbs and heats from below at that exact same temperature Ooh, you might see her you might see her poke out you know what i have a light on this so we'll do that yeah, there she is. Uh, she's She just ate. Um, she's getting pretty fat. She jumped up into the air. Got some water, you know. Great stuff. Water. Wet hide. Uh, food dish. Dry hide. Poop, poop corner. She always poops in that corner. And so far she hasn't pooped on the mat, which is beautiful. It's looking beautiful. Except for that spot. Where she, she tracks out the mud. Always. Why Why do you do this? Why do you do this, girl? You ruin the beautiful, beautiful floors I give you. Oh, her little tongue goes, oh, look at that tongue. Slurp, slurp. All right. Um, so, yeah. Uh, this is her closure. It's got a nice, like, purple light. It's got the bright, just normal light. Sorry if that was very bright. And yeah, it's been working pretty nice. Um, I normally turn off the uh, basking bulb here, the night light at night, and turn on the incandescent bulb during the day, which stays around 91 degrees, you know, in that area. Like it stays, it stays in that area. Um, and yeah, no, it's pretty great. Um, Makes it nice and daytime during the day. Um, next up, we have the Betta, who I don't think has a name other than Betta. Mr. Blue, maybe. We'll go with Mr. Blue. He's Mr. Blue. He's doing really great. Um, I don't have a light on here. This is entirely naturally lit and stuff. Um, I kind of just have the lid for this tiny thing on, sitting on top of it. But yeah, um, this is... Also a bit of a biological experiment. Um, I feed the bed of the bloodworms. But in here, I took like pond water, like outside pond water sort of a thing. 
and just this plant here and dumped it in just halfway up, let the plant grow, and it's been growing and growing and growing. And I added in stones later, um, <laughs> lots and lots of stones. This big one here, um, there was duckweed, but the duckweeds all died out, I think. There's some hornwort growing, there's a lot of algae. It's got a big colony of snails. It's really great and healthy. It's a big ecosystem that all works together. And it's really just, it's been going great. I used, I had some tadpoles in here at one point. Um, sadly, they didn't really metamorphosis. They just kind of stayed tadpoles and then died. Like it was, it was way past time. Like one of, only one of them metamorphosis, and then the rest just swam until they died. And like, yeah, it was sad. But the one frog, he, he got out and I released him. But then in here, in this tiny little thing, that tiny little speck there in the background, that thing, that's a guppy. A little baby. All my sword tail babies used to be that big. I have no idea. I think that's some java moss. Either that or some algae, but I think it's java moss. I'm like 90% sure that it's java moss. And then this is, uh, wentil, which all my wentil seems to have died out, so it's sad. And there's this pothos that grows out of this one in the next tank here, which is where I keep my good boy, the rope fish. Um, this is Cora. She has been doing very well in here. Um, I have zebra daniels for food. She eats them quite often. Um, actually, not that often. I'm sorry. But, you know, once a week or so, I'll wake up and find that there's one missing. Um, which, it's... <laughs> pretty okay yeah just wake up and be like oh she ate and she's liked it in here um i want to get um some driftwood i want to get some driftwood to put it in here so that she has a better like hiding place i'll rearrange it a little bit for that she likes to hide in that bridge and especially that corner and under the moss ball that moss ball there she loves to hide under it um but yeah no and that's some java moss that used to be a ball but isn't now. Oop. So yeah, um, she eats the fishies and it's, it works out great. Um, this Valisneria here is putting out new growth, which I'm really, really happy for. Um, there used to be like I forget what that stuff is. I, it's mini sword, I think. Yeah, it was mini sword, which used to be planted under there, as you can see by the one remaining stem used to be planted there, but then Cora ripped it up, and I have to go in one by one, pick out every single little stem and replant it if I want to do it, and I think I'm just going to take it out and throw it into the beta tank, because I'm lazy, and the Valisneria will eventually just grow in and hopefully cover a lot of the bottom. But the Zebra Daniels, they add in a bit of an active part of this enclosure that I wouldn't get with just having the row fish, because... Core is, a, core is a bit of a, you know, sit still and lay there. Although, she might be more active at night. I think she's more active at night. I haven't looked. But my guess, my best guess would be that she is, because she's nocturnal. But yeah, no, that's, that's all my animals. Oh wait, no, that's technically not. I have a mealworm colony, which feeds the gecko. And they live in this box here. I need to feed them and give them more oatmeal. More oatmeal, lots more oatmeal, yeah. And yeah, I think that that should be everything. Well, yeah, we'll end it here, looking at my pretty, pretty rope fish. And so, leave a like, subscribe, definitely do share the video, but leave some comments on what you wanna see next. Ciao.